My name is Cheryl Sledge and I will be presenting my RN to BSN Midwestern State University Capstone Project. My project was on the effectiveness of hourly rounding in fall prevention in an acute care setting. Fall prevention is for everyone. It's not just for the patient, it's not just for the staff, it's for everyone and it has to be a common goal. The objectives for this project are as follows to assess the importance of preventing falls in the acute care setting, to assess the importance of preventing falls with injury in the acute care setting, which are considered sentinel events and are reportable to the Joint Commission, assess the effects of hourly rounding in relation to falls and falls with injury in the acute care setting, to identify the financial ramifications of falls in the acute care setting, and finally, to incorporate the practice of hourly rounding into nursing unit routines. As an introduction to the topic, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality in 2019 estimated that between 700,000 to 1 million patients fall each year. That was prior to the pandemic and those numbers have risen. More than one third of falls that occur in the hospital setting result in injury to the patient. Medicare and Medicaid services are no longer reimbursing hospitals for costs associating with, associated with a fall as they feel it is a preventable, preventable event. This topic is very personal to me as recently I had a family, mem family member in the hospital that had a fall that resulted in injury. The fall resulted in the need for an increased level of care and increased length of stay. It also changed our decisions on discharge. As the patient did not go home, they ended up going to rehab and then to assisted living. Patient falls are a common occurrence in acute care settings. Patients find themselves weak due to illness and in unfamiliar surroundings. Patients that would normally not be a fall risk suddenly are due to a change in their condition. This may be as simple as them having a um, endoscopy procedure or them having a new medication added. Uh, anesthesia, medications, uh, pain medications, um, and a lot of heart medications can, ca can cause adverse side effects such as dizziness, lightheadedness, um, which can in turn attribute to patient falls. Patients often try to get up without assistance, not wanting to wait for help from staff resulting in patient falls. Fall prevention is important in acute care as patient safety is key to all that we do as healthcare professionals. Positive patient outcomes, both medically and regarding patient satisfaction during hospital stays are significant for hospitals at this time. At the facility I work, we have a slogan of please call, don't fall. Your safety is most important to us. If you need to get up, use the call button for assistance. Unfortunately, not all patients do. Our goal in healthcare is to always avoid patient harm. The World Health Organization in 2021 rated fall with injury as the second leading cause of unintentional deaths and an estimated 684,000 individuals die from falls yearly worldwide. Patient falls remain at the forefront of patient safety. Falls are preventable and falls with harm lead to longer hospital stays and costs for for facilities. All healthcare institutions prioritize, prioritize falls as a major safety issue that is managed by nurses daily. And that's from Harden et al, which was an article that I reviewed. This topic is clinically significant as fall events in the hospital seen both during and post pandemic have risen. At the facility where I work, fall events are elevated. The Falls Committee recently reported that we have had 131 fall events so far this year compared to 126 in, at the same time in 2021, with 16 of those falls resulting in harm to the patient. Patient safety is defined as avoiding harm to patients from care that is intended to help them. The, and that is from the Agency of Healthcare Research and Quality. Financially, for healthcare institutions, a fall is costly to the hospital, as the patient will have an extended length of stay and require increased monitoring. And as I previously stated, Medicare and Medicaid do not reimburse hospitals for costs associated with a preventable fall. The expert I reviewed at the hospital where I work actually reported 
that one patient fall recently resulted um, in injury, which was a hip fracture, and that resulted in a $180,000 cost to the facility. While I knew calls, falls were costly, I had no idea what those costs were. My, uh, my PICO question was, in acute care, how does the implementation of staff hourly rounding compare to no hourly rounding and the incidence of patient falls? The nine articles analyzed overall reported that purposeful hourly rounding is worth the time and effort to implement as they saw a decrease in patient falls when hourly rounded, rounding was instituted. The data showed that fall events can potentially decrease anywhere from 21% to 54%, which is significant. Hourly rounding also increased communication between staff and patients, decreased call light usage, and decreased patient falls. The implementation plan would consist of staff education prior to rollout and, and ongoing during onboarding of new staff. There would be two classes, one for licensed and one for unlicensed. Both classes would include education regarding the four P's, pain, potty, physician, and possessions, making sure all of those things are taken care of for the patient on an hourly basis from six to 10 and every two hours from 10 to six. It would also include a review of our fall prevention policy. And then in addition, um, RNs would get a review of our Morse fall scale assessment requirement, and that should be done on admission every shift and with change in condition. There would be specific um, education around the change in condition because I feel that's where a lot of times we lack in re-screening uh, our patients. So it would be reviewed um, medications that can cause and help attribute to patient falls, medications, procedures, anesthesia, all that would be reviewed so that nurses would know that, that those are times when we should rescreen our patients. Patients would also be provided fall prevention education on admission with reinforcement as needed, and they would be presented with a fall prevention contract to be reviewed and signed on admission. Evaluation for this project would be ongoing as this is a process improvement project. All patient fall occurrences would be reviewed and a post fall huddle form utilized. We would obtain call ice usage data from the vendor and we would monitor for increase, decreases, or no change in our data. We would also obtain um, our staff locator badge data at the, at the uh, facility where I work. All staff have a locator badge so you can tell when a patient, when a patient has a staff member in their room. Um, there is a, there is a monitoring system, so we could get we could get that data from our vendor to know if hourly rounding is really occurring as um, as we've asked. We would analyze all our call light usage and hourly rounding in correlation with any fall events that did occur and complete a root cause analysis. And after 90 days, we would survey staff to gain feedback as to what is working well. Um, what isn't working and where we might have areas for, for improvement. During implementation, um, we would have our rounding expectations reviewed during daily huddles on the units. That would include the nurse manager, charge nurse, and all staff. All fall events would be entered into the event monitoring application as they are now, and post-fall um, debriefings would, would, would occur at the time when the fall occurs so that staff um, can express how they're feeling, um, why they felt the fall might have occurred, what they could have done differently, and uh, just get a feel of what happened. The falls committee will also continue to meet monthly and monitor the progress of the implementation. The results of the intervention and implementation will be disseminated. The data will all be compiled into a power, into PowerPoint form and presented to the falls committee. Um, after that 90-day uh, mark, um, all of the recommendations for the FALLS program will be provided um, with the data to the senior leadership team and the hospital board for their review. And finally, the analysis and final manuscript will be submitted to the American Journal of Nursing for approval for publication. In summary, 
In 2019, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality estimated that 700,000 to 1 million hospitalized patients fall each year, which is an astronomical number. In 2021, the World Health Organization estimated that 684,000 individuals die from, fall, from falls yearly worldwide. Acute care facilities are working digital, di, diligently to reduce those numbers, and this literature review supports instituting hourly staff rounding with a prevention with a fall prevention program to reduce the incidence of patient fall, falls. Thank you for your time and for listening to my presentation.